Hello, Scott here. Uh, today I'm cutting up some pine to build some nuke boxes. Uh, my nuke boxes, I need pieces that are 8 inch and uh, 19 and 8. Uh, I'll make a four frame nuke box out of that. Um, I'm doing it a little bit different than when I did the honey supers. The honey supers I ripped it to the, I think six and five eighths and it left me with four inches and something. Uh, that four inch piece that was 16 feet long, I cut that all up to make um, uh, floors. Uh, this, because I need nine and five eighths, only leaves me inch and a half piece. Instead of ripping it to width first, I'll cut it to length first and then I'll rip, it's just easier to rip the little pieces, and then the little pieces that come off are already the right length to make a handle. Plus, another reason, some of these boards have a bit of a wane on this side and that side. So if you rip an inch and a half off one side first, well, then that piece over there you're not going to be able to use. If I cut it into length first, I can choose which side I, I rip it. I get better material. Another thing, some of the nukes that I make, I'll actually make them deeper, um, I do this with my quiet boxes as well, uh, and then I just paint them different so I can keep track of them. The reason for that is if you're doing a brood inspection and you come across a frame that's got a nice big swarm cell on the bottom of it, uh, with a little bit deeper nuke box, you can put that in without damaging it. So that's another reason for cutting this length first, and I'll just make up six or eight boxes that are a little deeper. Yeah, when the bees go in, they've got to build a little bit of ladder comb to get up, but again, it just gives you that option, gives you a place to put that queen cell. So not really a whole lot to show you here. I do it the same as always. I've got little blocks. Uh, this one's for the 8-inch piece, and that, of course, is my, my favorite piece. I use that more than anything else. Um, there's a big ugly knot there, so I'm actually going to get a, a 19 and an eighth, and then I'll take an 8 inch piece out, do away with that, and then we'll see what else we get. So let's make some sawdust, make some noise, and we'll see what happens. That'll be all right, I think. Uh, I don't have to do any router work on the side pieces. I only have to do uh, router work on these end pieces. So I think that one will turn out fine. That board actually had a quite a bit of waste. Uh, I've been cutting a few here, and uh, some of the other ones were pretty good, but I still didn't do too bad there. So I will get several more boards cut up, and then we'll get the router set up to do the, uh, the milling work on this. So stay tuned. All right, so I've got all my pieces cut from my nuke boxes. I've made all my sides and I've got all my ends stacked up back here and now I have to rip them to width. Uh, before I got into that, I thought I'd kind of explain my nuke box and maybe it's a bit more or a bit overkill perhaps, I don't know. I know a lot of guys do mate their queens in those the smaller little mating boxes and nothing wrong with them, they work perfectly fine. Only issue I have with those is that once that queen's mated, you really can't leave her in there. And I realize for a commercial operation, that's their whole idea. They're going to pull that mated queen out, put another cell in and keep going and keep going. I don't do that. I, I only graft once a year. And by having, by using a, a full, for, a full size brood frame in my new boxes, um, I can leave that queen in there and let her build. And then I can observe her and, and evaluate her laying. Um, and then decide what I'm going to do with her, but I'm not in any hurry. So I do have quite a few pieces to this, but that's fine. Uh, it works really good. Um, we'll dig down into it here. So this, it's the same size, same, same depth and length as a brood frame, except it's only 8 inches. I put a piece of 3 8 plywood on the bottom, and then uh, I have a, a 3 8 by 1 inch entrance, and I have a little door I can close if I need to. And the bottom has one, one hole for ventilation. And then what I do, I make a, a second brood box, of course, with no bottom. Um, and then what I'll do, okay, initially I put the cell in here and get her going. I have an inner cover with two vent holes. And actually, I see this one's got some chicken scratching. That was just notes about the queen that was in there this summer. So I put my inner cover on. Then the second brood box I actually just use as a ventilation box. Just allows that heat and moisture to come up through there and get out either end. And then the roof goes on. That's the way I would start her off. Now I can feed them. On top of these holes, I can either put 
a quart jar on there, or actually the gallon jars do fit in there. But look for nukes. I don't actually. I don't think I've ever done that. But I'll do this. You cover one, and you still get some ventilation. So that goes on like so. Now, if if I don't end up doing anything with that queen in a reasonable length of time, she starts to build up a little bit too strong in there, perhaps. Um, I could pull a frame of brood out and give it to something else. Or what I usually end up doing is take the inner cover off and then I put a second one on. And then put the vent or the uh, inner cover. Now having this as a vent box is also handy. I can sit, sit it on the roof and then I'm doing an inspection. You know, usually I have my quiet box here anyway, but I can use this as a quiet box as well because it has the frame rest. So that would go there in there. And I, you know, I'm fortunate. I don't have any big wind here. I've actually never had these fall over. Um, we had a couple of storms. I, I did get nervous and I went out and put a couple staples in, but as long as it's sitting on something uh, reasonably flat and stable, it's fine. So I need to rip these. Now, uh, I think I mentioned I end up with about an inch and a half piece. This actually ends up working out perfect for the inner cover or in the case of this one, it has an ugly knot there. I can cut that and that ends up being my handle. So the pieces that I'm trimming off aren't going to really be wasted. I'll use them for the inner cover and I'll use them for handles. And I think that's it. So I'm going to get all of this ripped um, and then we'll get on to doing the, the rotor work on the end pieces. So stick around. All right, so I've got all the pieces cut to length and ripped to width and from the scraps I've made all the pieces here for my uh, my inner covers, and I also made all the pieces for my handles. They're all done. So now I need to do a little wee bit of rotor work on the ends. I need to create a 3 eighths of an inch deep by 3 quarter inch cut for the lap joint for the corners of the nuke boxes. And, and to do that, I've got a couple pieces of pine that I've planed down to exactly 3 eighths of an inch. I have a, a 1 inch square cut rotor bit. I put my 3 eighths uh, measuring tools on there and then I put a straight edge across the top and there's an adjustment underneath and I get that blade adjusted exactly in 3 eighths. And then to get the 3 quarter inch depth cut, I have a couple pieces of 3 quarter inch pine I put here. I take that rotor bit and I turn it so the tip is at its furthest point out in its circle or its arc and then a straight edge on there and then I just move the fence back and forth until I get it where I need to get it. Then all I do is of course going to put the guard back on. I'll make a couple of test cuts first, which I've actually already done, and then I'll check, and if I have to make any fine tunes, I'll fine tune adjustments, I'll do that. Uh, and then I just simply rode these pieces through. Now, this one's not bad, but some of these pieces have a little wee bit of a cup to them, so I'll make sure I put the, the high up, and then I, as I'm pushing it through, I can actually press them down, and I can usually get most of that out. So we're gonna do that, we'll do a couple cuts, and then I'll show you how I test it. Let me turn the dust collector on. to that so like I say I take my 3 8 piece and I just quickly check this to make sure the depth of my cut is good and I'm happy with that and then I would just grab a nether end or anything another piece of a 3 quarter inch and I can check check the depth of that cut there and that's that's really good so there we are we'll do that I got about 150 do I'll get that done and then we'll come back and we'll do the 5 8 for the frame rest so stick around All right, so we've got the 3 8 by 3 quarter inch lap joints done to create the uh, corners for our boxes on the uh, on the end parts of our new boxes. Need to create a 3 8 by 5 8 cut. Um, the height of the router bit doesn't change, so it's still 3 8 but I have a couple spacers that are 5 8 I, I put in here, and, and then I adjust the fence back and forth. I have a still shot I'll show you. So I've done that. All I need to do now is uh, put the guard back on. And then uh, I'll take a couple of test cuts and recheck it, which I've already done. But we'll just cut one, and then I'll just show you very quickly how I how I do that. Let me plug this machine back in. Turn the dust collector on. So 
So the first thing I always check, take my 3 8 measuring tool and I just feel that and make sure the depth of the cut's good. And then the 5 8 piece I put on here and I, I just check the other way. So it's, it's 5 8 deep, 3 8 in. So that's our frame rest. I'll get the rest of the ends all done and then we'll go on to assembly. So stick around. Alright, so it's time to assemble our little nuke boxes and, and all I do here is I, I grab a couple of ends and I, I just have a real quick look at my milling work and make sure there's no big burrs or anything. And then grab my trusty glue and put a, put a little bead down both sides of the ends where the, where the sides are going to mate into it. Then I just uh, I grab a side and uh, I always just check to see if it's got a little bit of a wow and the, the wow I'll put to the outside because I can pull it in with a clamp. So I just, oh, then I have a, a little block with a couple of air nails in it, uh, nailed down to the table. This gives me something to push against. Makes it a lot easier to put this all together when you have a, when it stays put. And you can see this one maybe, it, it's got quite a little uh, curve to it. So we put the bow, we put the bow out because I can pull it in with a clamp. And then we put our other end in. And at this point, I mean, you gotta be kind of careful or it's all just gonna fall apart on you. But uh, we get that there and then we take a bar clamp and I, I usually just put one across the top and pull in just a little bit, not a lot, that holds it. And then I'll, I'll push the sides in a bit. Uh, I won't be able to show you yet, but I'll show you in a second that these two sides, they're, they're cupped out a little wee bit. So you can take a bar clamp, put it across the end and bring it in. And usually what I do is I put it just a little bit below center. I want to put three screws here. If you put the clamp right in the middle, you can't get that center screw in. So then I just check inside and I check this. This one here is up a little wee bit. So I just give it a little love top and uh, straighten that out. Then the screws, you want to put them, you want to put them down about an inch from the top and then you're trying to get in the center of this side piece. Um, sometimes, um, if you're having trouble with the wood splitting, well, drill a, drill a pilot hole with a 1 8 drill, but I, Finding with this pine, I'm not having too much trouble this time. And like I say, I'll put uh, three into each board. And then what I do, I should be able to show you here. You can see, hopefully you can see, there's quite a gap right in there because these boards are, are buckled out a little bit. So I just spin it around. Keep losing the foot off my little clamp here. And I put this clamp on there, and it's reasonably easy actually to pull those sides in. And now you should be able to see it's, it's actually quite tight in there. So hopefully you can see that. But if not, take my word for it. And I just double check that, making sure that you know the two pieces are flush, and then six screws in this end. Not really that hard. These impact drivers are definitely the way to go with this kind of stuff. Just be careful not to, you can put them right through the wood. Though. And that is all there is to that. So now we have to, still got to drill our holes for our vents and our handles, but we'll do that a little later. So stick around. All right, so we've got all our nuke boxes put together. Now it's time to put the ventilation hole. When I put this hole in here, I, of course, I want them all to be in the same location, so I have a little jig for that. But I also want to drill this hole in an angle, an upward angle, so that when rain hits here, it runs in. It's not going to run in the hive, it'll run out. So to do that, I just have a little jig made up with a couple blocks in the back. Uh, I always position my, my nuke box with the frame rest. I feel that when I'm grabbing the boxes because I want the hole to be at the top. So I make sure the frame rest is away from me. Then this little block, it just goes on like so. I've got a mark there, which is the center and, and this depth, it's just the depth that I've played with over a couple years and that's what I like. So I put that on like that. I take a pencil. I just create a little mark and then I take my, my hole saw and currently I'm using an inch and a half. Uh, there's a little pilot drill. You put the pilot drill right on your, your little top of your T there. Then I start the drill and then I'll tilt back. I'll show you a second. Something else I do is I lift it in and out a couple times because this uh, hole saw wants to plug up with sawdust. So we just get it started. And then usually I lean back. I don't know what that angle is, but 
About that much seems to work pretty good. And just before it breaks through, you feel it start to go, ease up on the pressure. If you push too hard, you create a, quite a burr on the back. So just, just at the very end, you just go gentle. Then to get that little plug out of there, there's some holes in the side and a screwdriver. You simply pry a little bit, pull it out, flip it over and go to the next side. All right, so we've got all our holes drilled in our nuke boxes. So now the next step is to put some screen in there. And uh, I just use the number eight hardware cloth. It's the one eighth screen. Uh, my sweetheart cut up a bunch of scraps for me the other day, quite a pile here. Not really a lot to this. You just, you just position it over the hole. You don't want to get up too high because then you get into the frame rest. So just keep it down. Oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a quarter inch from the frame. Make sure it's laying flat. You know, you don't, or else when you're putting the frames in and out, you'll get stuck. Then staple gun with some quarter inch staples. And I just put four in, one on each corner. That one there misfired. There we are. And uh, hopefully you can see that. That's all there's to that. So we just flip it over, do the next one and carry on. All right, so we've got our screens put in our, our nuke boxes. Now the last step for, the, for this part is just to get the handle put on. And as always, I've got a little jig for handles, a couple little blocks in the back. Um, that just simply goes on the top of the nuke and it slides over. And the, the two little blocks in the back get it to the right height and keep it square. Then all I do is lay a, about a 1 8 bead of glue six inches long on there. I grab my handle, I have a quick look at it. Sometimes you have the odd one, has a little tiny knot. If it is, I try and put that down so that it doesn't collect moisture, but most of these are good. Clean the sawdust off. Then I, I simply put it down. I'm using my, my two forefingers to, to check to, to get it square. I make sure that this little jig is pushed down tight. I push this up against the jig. So now that gets the handle to the exact right height and it gets it square. Then I just throw a couple of air nails. These are inch and a half. So I do put them near the edge so that they don't stick out on the inside of the box. Um, if you put them in, yeah, you, you end up and then when you're trying to scrape and clean up, it's pain. Then I got some number eight by inch and a half, uh, number two red Robinson. These screws are shade long too, but I haven't found inch and a quarter in these huge boxes. So I use the inch and a half. Um, two pieces of three quarters, obviously an inch and a half. So if I sink the screw out of sight, it's gonna stick, stick out the other side. So when you're putting it down, just go easy. <laughs> Just bring it so that it's flush and then it doesn't come out the other side. And I also keep them in a little bit. I, sometimes I would try and put them on the outside edge so that if it does stick through, it goes into that three quarter. But I find with the number eight, uh, it wants to split it. I've also done it with number six screws. If you have number six screws, of course you can do it on the outside edge. But for these ones, I've just learned, just put it in a couple inches. And then just don't sink them out of sight. Then I have my trusty little, little box groove in the center that I can put that handle in and that also gets us up to a bit more of a comfortable working height for me and then I just simply repeat the other side a little dab of glue grab a handle handle on center it square it tack it and the air, the air nails like I say they just stop it from moving while you're trying to put the screws in or else it slides around on the glue and that is all there is to putting handles on. Now this box would be, well it can be any one of the three boxes. It can be the bottom box, which is the main nuke box, or what I call the nuke super, or the number two box, or the ventilation box. So for the number two box, or the ventilation box, um, this is complete, with exception of some paint, which I'll do when the weather warms up. For the bottom box, I've got a couple more steps, steps but we'll get to that, so stick around. All right, so today we're gonna to put the floor and the entrance on my little nuke box, and I have two different styles. I've made 25 in total, but I have eight of them that I've made deeper. You can see it's oh, a good inch and a half or so. The reason I did that is if you're doing a brood inspection, you find a, a frame that's got a, a queen cell on the bottom. If you were to try to put that in a standard nuke box, well, you're gonna destroy that queen cell. Whereas if you have a, a box that's just a little wee bit deeper, and you put that frame in there, it'll be something like that. 
you see I've got a good inch and a half on the bottom. Now I do realize that when it's in here, they're going to have to build some ladder comb, but I only use these if I find a queen cell. So it's just, it just gives you that little extra option. Now to create the doorway, it's pretty straightforward. I have a one inch straight cut router bit, set the three eighths of an inch high and have the fence pushed all the way back. And then I put a couple boards here that are clamped down and that's, that's just a guide to prevent the, prevent the nuke box from shifting side to side. So we just turn the machine on. Give it a second to come up to speed and then just push it in, pull it out, and there you got a nice little entrance. Now to put the, put the, the actual bottom on, all I do is put, lay a nice bead of glue all the way around. The glue, and I'll staple it. The glue does 90% of it. I have never screwed one on, I just staple them. So the plywood is cut to be the right width, but it's a little bit longer. So you just line it up on the sides and I try and get it lined up on the back. Then I have some one inch staples, my staple gun. I'll just put one in this front corner, your fingers out of the way, and then I'll just double check the back and I throw one in the back corner. Then I try to put one either side of the door so you kind of got to eyeball it. Keep your fingers out of there. You might miss once or twice, but you'll figure it out. Then I put four, to, four or five down the side. I think the staples are probably there just to hold it till the blue dries. And then again, same on the other side. And that's all there is to putting the floor on. The doorway, just some 3 8 scrap I cut up. They're about 2 inches by 3. I take and I bevel off that one corner and then I drill a hole equal distance in that little arc that would be created there. Uh, screws I've used on these ones, they're, I believe those are number 8 by 3 quarter with a pan head. And then uh, make sure there's no excess glue there. Then I just position it so the door is covered and a little block of wood to push against and then just snug that screw up. Don't over tighten the screw because if you strip it, well then the door is just too loose and it doesn't want to doesn't want to work proper. That way you can just you make your nuke and you want to keep the bees in, just close the middle door for a little while. So that's it for putting the floors and the door on. Uh, we'll get on to the inner cover and roof next. So stick around. All right, so today I'm putting together the inner covers for my little nuke boxes, and I have to create the sides and the ends. I have to make the dado, the dado cut to accept the plywood. And I just thought I'd stop and just show you how I do that. Um, I've got a, a 3 8 straight cut router bit set to 3 8 high, and from the back of the router bit, I have the fence moved back 3 8 So when this runs through, it'll create a 3 8 dado cup and it'll cut and it'll leave a, a 3 8 space behind it. Now, you know, I normally have that little cover on there and very carefully with a little pusher stick, push it through, but I don't like putting my fingers in there. So I thought about building something with some little rollers and whatnot. I mean, I'm totally capable of that. But I have a buddy of mine whose dad's been a, wood, a woodworker all his life. And the man's in his 70s, and now here's the key feature. He still has all his fingers. <laughs> I pay real close attention to guys like that. And he showed me this little contraption, so easy to make. Just a chunk of pine, I think it's about a 10 inch board. Cut that out of 45, and I had to trim it back here so it fits my router table. And then you take it on the table saw and you create a whole bunch of these fingers. And what you do is you, uh, you put a couple pieces of the, the wood you're gonna work with some clamps out of the way, up against there, and then you put it, kind of position it so the rotor bit's somewhere around the center. Then you grab a bar clamp, and just get the bar clamp on the back here, and just before you tighten it, you just kind of push that in against those little pieces of wood, just bend those fingers ever so slightly. So now that'll hold it up tight against the fence, and it also makes it pretty difficult to come backwards, so it prevents it from kicking back. Then, just, now my wood is all plain to three quarter and it's pretty pretty nice material. Uh, if you had rough material or, or a little, the thickness varied, you can make a second one of these and clamp it up on top, but my material's in pretty good shape. So I just take another piece of dressed pine and sit it on top. Don't press it down, just sit it up there. A couple seed clamps. Clamp that so it holds it. Now that's going to hold the, your work down. Like I say, you don't want to push it. Oops, you don't want to push it too hard. You just want that sitting there. Then all you do is you you, you start the one. Where's my headphones? You start the one, and then you use the next one to keep pushing them through. Works pretty simple.
knock the sawdust out of it. There you've got your nice 3 8 dado cut. And hopefully when I'm 70, I'll still have all my fingers. So I'll do a few more of these, and then we'll start assemb assembling our inner covers. Stick around. All right, so it's time to assemble our inner covers for our nuke boxes, and it's not difficult to do. Just a few pieces to glue and air, uh, air staple together. Our side pieces are 19 and an eighth, and these ones ended up being an inch and a half just because of the scraps that I use. And then I created a 3 eighths wide by 3 eighths deep dado cut for the plywood, and the ends are 8 inches, and there's a, a 3 quarter inch by 3 eighths joint there to make the... Uh, to make the lap joint here. And I've already put the glue on this, so I'm being careful. The plywood is seven and a quarter by 19, three eighths. And as always, I take my planer and I clean off the edges all the way around just, just to make assembling a little easier. So like I said, I've already put the glue in here. All I do is line up the one end and I just gently and carefully push it down in there and uh, similar on the other end, wiggle it, tap it on a hammer if you have to. Now, it is three eighths on the bottom and uh, it looks like I got about half or five eighths there. So you gotta make sure you put these, you know, put them on all in the same way or else things aren't gonna work out too well for you. So just put that on. I don't press them down real tight at first because I gotta get the ends on, but just make sure they're started. Then same thing with the end, just line up one end, Push her down, sometimes a little hammer, rubber hammer, whatever it takes. Tap it, put it, I'm gonna just put it together just too easy, really. Then I just put that there. I like to use a clamp to, uh, to squeeze in the sides and then uh, just checking it, looking it over. Then I'm gonna put a couple air staples in there. I don't screw this, I don't use air nails. The staples, I find the staples hold really good. I put two in each corner. Take the clamp off, turn it around. Clamp this side. I'm clamping this to pull in these two sides before I, I, you know, put the nails in or the staples in because once the staples are in, you're not going to pull it in. Two in each corner. And that's that. Then um, I have a little jig holes for nuke boxes. It just goes in, sits down that corner. Then uh, there's two marks on it here and here. I just create a, a little T there and a little T there. Just so that's, that just gets, gets all the holes the same spot. I have uh, the same uh, hole saw as I use on my big inner covers. It's an uh, inch and a quarter. I just want to drill part way through here. Um, if you drill all the way through, you always end up with a burr on the other side. So if you drill part way through and flip it over, you don't get that burr. And I gotta watch my table too. And if you rock the drill around, lots of times that little donut comes out easier. So just drill part way, put the pilot drill on that T. And what I do is I flip it over. The pilot drill went through, so now you know where you're at. And now I'm gonna get off the table so I don't wreck my table. And you see that donut just fell right out, fell onto the floor. If not, you have to get a screwdriver. There's little slots and you have to pry it out. That one stayed. So yeah, you get a screwdriver and take that out. So now there's a bottom and a top. The bottom, you have a 3 8 gap. That's the B space, because this is going to go on top of the, the brood frames. The other side's got about 5 8 So that's the side we want to put our screen on. Number eight hardware cloth, uh, some quarter inch staples. One, one in each corner. Make sure the screen lays down flat. That's it. There's our inner cover. I don't run a top entrance, but obviously if you wanted a top entrance, uh, all I would use is my uh, one inch uh, square cut router bit. Uh, if you watch the video on my inner covers for the, the 10 frame colonies, you'll see how I did that. But anyway, on my little nuke boxes, I don't run um, upper entrances, so that's it. I'll have to get these painted, but other than that, it's done. So let's go build some roofs now. All right, so now it's time to assemble the little roofs that I make for my nuke boxes, and it's quite simple. Um, this, uh, I have some 5 8 It's a tongue and groove with a, a central V. I've actually cut the tongue off this piece already. It was um, interior paneling. I did a room with this a few years ago and had quite a bit left over. So I just simply rip off the, uh, the, the tongue and the groove, and then I rip it in the center, and I, I end up with those 5 8 by... Um, uh, two inch wide by five eighths thick pieces. Then I cut them to length. I cut them to 20 and a quarter by two, and I cut them to nine and three quarter by two. And then the plywood for the roof, just three eighths plywood, uh, is 21 and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And as always, I have a jig, 
Um, this little assembly jig is the greatest little thing I ever made. These uh, five blocks are nailed down to this chunk of 5 8 plywood, I guess. And all you have to do is you take your end and you put it in there. This one here, oh, got a little burr on there. They do fit snug. And then uh, the two sides go in. And then the other end would go on. I glue it and then, and then the plywood goes on the top. So, so all I have to do is take my, uh, my one end piece and I just lay a little bit of glue there. Okay, and stand it up in there. I say this one here is fitting just a little bit tight, but anyway. And slide those two up into it and take the other one and uh, put a little glue on this end. Glue is just about empty. I've been putting an awful pile of stuff together today. Put that there. Then I grab my trusty air stapler. I got one inch, one inch staples there. And lot, you know, you can still the jig hold you still a little bit to get it perfect. You can watch where you put your fingers, of course. Put two staples in this corner. And then I have a look at this one and two staples here. Then what I do is I actually I don't worry about the other end right now. I'll lay a, lay a bead of glue on there and across down. Yeah, you know, you have a look at that end. If it if it is out of whack, well, I'll, I'll deal with it, but in, usually it isn't. Then you just put the plywood on top, use your fingers. This is plywood just a shade long, so I'm, I probably got a sixteenth on each end, so I, I'm just splitting the difference. Then I get that lined up and that lined up. Then I just tuck one in the corner, and then I'll just kind of feel and usually I just recheck real quick. Hold that down, put three or four down the side, and a few across the end, and then up this side. And then across this end. Then just lift it out of there. Be careful because that end's not, you know, this corner's not attached yet. So then I just lay it here. And again, I'll just grab this piece and I can move that back and forth a little bit. Try and get this, this outside corner lined up nice, nice. And I'll put two staples in there. And that is that. I don't have issues with uh, coming apart. Um, of course, these aren't normally out for the winter time. So there you have it. We have our, our bottom with the entrance and a little door. And then uh, if, if that, you know, you start with four frame nuke and, and you could put the inner cover on here and then use this as a vent in the roof. But if, if it's building too strong and you don't have a use for that queen right now, you could put a second nuke box on with four frames and let her build, evaluate her. And then I'll, I'll use another uh, brood box actually as a ventilation box. And then last but least, we have a roof. So that is my nukes. Um, hope you enjoyed. Lots of fun building these. I got a few more pieces to put together and then I'll have to wait for a warmer day and get them outside and paint them. But uh, that's it for that. So thanks for watching and as always, you be good to your bees and I'm sure they'll be good to you. See you next time. Bye bye.